Um, my name is Eddie Farrell. I grew up on the Gold Coast in Australia. I started boxing with my father at a young age. Um, I wasn't disciplined back then. Um, I didn't really want it. I was getting, I was more getting pushed into it through um, my mum and my dad. Um, I wasn't ready. I was drinking. I was young. I just, I was, I wasn't ready for it. When I, when I got a little bit older by myself, and when I met my girlfriend Brooke, we stopped, stopped drinking alcohol, stopped partying, and we were, we wanted a focus and a goal. So we started training Muay Thai and kickboxing. When we went to, we moved to Darwin in the Northern Territory, and I, I took up. Um, a security job in the pubs and clubs up there. I worked that for seven years. But when I, when we first moved there, I met my my new friends. In they were, they were into the gym. They were into kickboxing. They were a good influence influence and role models around me. So I started training um, kickboxing, boxing, and Muay Thai for for about seven years and working security. And that gave me the goal and the drive and the good influence around me to um, to take up. Um, martial arts full time and um, to make it my, my new goal in life. After having a few fights, we were thinking about Thai and we heard about the home, the home country, the motherland of Muay Thai in Thailand. So we were thinking we need to go there, we need to live there, we need to soak up all of this experience and skill and um, that's the best we can be in Thailand. Yeah, we, what we expected of Thailand was um, the fighter's dream, which, which it is, but it has its ups and downs a lot. We decided to make the trip to Thailand, so we first went on a holiday to Koh Samui. Um, it was beautiful paradise. We started training there, and um, yeah, we were hooked on just just the training style is so different compared to Australia. It's you have your own trainers, about 10 to 15 trainers in there with about 30 students, so you have your own trainer each each class, each session. So. We, we went there for a week and it wasn't long enough and we knew that that's what we had to do. That's where we were going to get the best, um, the best growth. That's where we were going to learn. You know, it's like a time chamber there, training in Thailand. One week was equal to one month. One month is equal to three to six months. Six months is equal to five years. We, we knew that's what we wanted to do. That, that was the goal, that was the focus. We, we had a small business, we sold the business. We had a car, we sold the car. We had furniture, TV, we sold it all. We had two dogs and we brought them over to Thailand with us. So we sold our stuff, we took our dogs with us, I took my wife with us, and that's where it started in Thailand. So when we moved to Thailand the first time, um, we moved to a place called Pai near Chiang Mai. And um, we love that place still. And it was the cheapest place in, the cheapest place in Thailand. Um, for us to live. Rent, rent for a house was about, I think we were paying three and a half thousand, three thousand baht a month, which is about 120 Australian dollars. And um, yeah, we loved it there, but it was just a, it was just a, little, a little shack, no, no hot water, um, yeah, no Wi-Fi, and it had holes in the roof, and there were spiders <laughs> dropping on Brook at night, and um, it was an awesome place, but it was just a, it was a bit too ghetto. So we stayed there for, I think, um, four months. And yeah, we loved it. And Brooke, Brooke had her first fight in Chiang Mai. And I think she, she got paid 2,000 2, baht for a fight, which is like nothing. It's like $80. And um, it's a great experience. Chiang Mai is the hub of female Muay Thai in the world, I think. It has the, it has the best um, and most active uh, Thai women to fight and and they're the best in the world compared to the foreigners. So it's great to get experience there, but there's just no money. Um, I don't even fight there because I don't want to fight for 2,000 baht. Anyway, we moved to Koh Samui where we went on holidays. And um, we love Koh Samui, but it's just the cost of living just flips. And, the, and the, um, I think we, we were sponsored as a gym there and it was a great gym to support but it, it was luckily it was half foreign owned, half Thai owned, but it was still pretty, um, pretty harsh with that. When you're sponsored at a gym, you feel like you're owned a little bit. You feel like you can't say no. So you might fight and then two days later, um, they'll say, oh, we have fight for you. I remember I fought, I fought one time in a stadium there for 6,000 baht. And as soon as I got out of the ring, they're saying, they're making me shake hands and size up with some 
Thai in the crowd that they wanted me to fight, and that's pretty normal. Just, just that's just the way it is in Thailand. Um, yeah, my first, I think, ten fights or something. Like they don't check weight. They they get the fighters in. They feel your arms, feel your legs. Like have a look at the size difference and say, yes, yeah, okay, can fight, can fight. Yeah, so they, so you um, pretty much sit out the back or you come in the day before. They they feel your arms, feel your legs, see the height, have a look at weight difference and say, okay, good. And a lot of the time in Thailand they do catch weights with um, experience and weight. So I may like I, I came there and I had like 10 fights and my opponents had, I don't know, who knows, 100, 200 fights. I fought guys with 300 fights. Um, so they sometimes they, they go by weight, they, they have a catch weight, they um, let experience have the smaller weight and the, the bigger flung <laughs> have, um, have a lower weight and, and let it battle out. But my last, I haven't been doing that for, I think, 15 fights, maybe more. I, I'd rather do check weight so it's, it's an, I know myself, I feel like it's an even fight. Um, it's a bigger show, it's a lot more money, it's a bigger challenge. Oh, but those check weight fights, those, there's no check weight fights in um, Koh Samui. They have them everywhere, Bangkok, Chiang Mai. Uh, sometimes you fight just someone 10 kilos heavier than you. Brooke fought a girl from Hong Kong once and Brooke was around 59 kilos just walking around when she checks weight at 54 and she, she fought a, a really good MMA fighter and kickboxer that was 70 kilos and it was a fun fight, good experiences, but um, I just think it's better to do it properly, check weight, have an even fight, get paid more, more exposure, train harder, mentally get ready. Um, I've been fighting in Thailand, I think I've had around about 30 fights in Thailand, oh no, 30 fights since being in Thailand. Um, yeah, my first, I think I had my first six to 10 fights just locally and then I started picking up a couple of um, bigger fights on TV, the three rounders. And I prefer to fight three rounders, it's more, more action, um, straight into it, less, less um, because you have stadium style Muay Thai which is beautiful and traditional. But, and then you have the three round um, TV Muay Thai for action and I think it's what's been getting the, the views on TV and it's more popular because um, a lot of people don't understand Muay Thai. But I have, I, since being in Thailand, I've fought in um, Russia, I've fought in China, I've fought in Hong Kong, I've fought in Myanmar. I've, in Myanmar it's called Left Way. Um, it's, it's Muay Thai with headbutts, no gloves, and um, pretty much the same, five rounds, but if the fight goes to five rounds, it's classified a draw, traditionally the rules are, and I fought that twice. Muay Thai for, for us is, it's a, it's a love-hate relationship, more, more love, like I'm, I'm trying, I, I keep my mindset, I enjoy it every day, I try and enjoy the grind, I enjoy training, being tired. Times suck and pressure gets high, but it's, if I didn't have that, I, I guess there's, um, you'd be very lost without it, you have to replace it, and I just don't know what I'd replace such a, such a big time gap with, it's my work, it's my life. Um, yeah, I spend like three hours in the gym in the morning, two to three in the afternoon, it's um yeah it's just it's, it's pretty much just a routine now and I, I love it and I've been doing it doing it in Thailand now for four years um and back home a couple of years it's, um like Muay Thai here it, it gives us opportunity to travel the world um, see many places meet meet so many people um, so many good people everyone's most people are so humble in the Muay Thai community. Everyone comes together because it all, I think it all goes back to like the ways and um, how traditional Thailand is and just, I think a lot of people have had their first couple of fights or when they do have fights in Thailand, they, they feel how not, not intimidating it is compared to boxing and MMA and even kickboxing, it's just a different sport. But it, it gives a lot of opportunity to, um, a lot of opportunity to, to the poor kids and people that have nothing to, um, to build a name for themselves, make money for their family. 
and um, had an opportunity to pay for their own pay for their own um, schooling or college and they can fight and then pay, pay for their future. Um, like one of my friends, he's a really good fighter, he's a Thai fighter and um, two, I think he had four brothers, three or four brothers and the father and mother said when they were young, you choose Lady Boy or you choose Muay Thai and um, actually I think three out of the four brothers chose to be a Lady Boy and um, he, he chose to do Muay Thai and the way he told me um, he was growing up, it was just like like a jail and he couldn't leave and he liked it, it was okay, but he's, he told me, I wish I was Lady Boy <laughs> because his brothers were making heaps of money and um, it, was, it seemed like an easier life for them doing that, but it, it's not. He said like one of his brothers killed himself, just the, prep, just, just the way of life. It, yeah, it, it's obviously not gonna be easy doing that shit. So apart from that, but yeah, it does give you opportunity in um, living in Thailand as, a, as coming from poor, poor communities, it gives, it gives the Thais the opportunity to travel too like, across the world. I think it's nearly impossible for a, um, a Thai to get a passport and, and travel without Muay Thai or without being a celebrity. A lot of people um, plan to come to Thailand, a lot of foreigners do come to Thailand for Muay Thai and they all have um, big, big dreams and big hopes like everyone. Everyone's, each fighter has a hope to be a champion and to do the best that they can, but it's to really to stick it out. And once you get here, the life isn't isn't um, what you think it is so much. It is beautiful, it is awesome, but it has massive lows. And a lot of people go home, they can't withstand the training of double sessions a day. Um, if you're sponsored, you can't say no to fights, you can't say no to not being there. Um, so it, it is hard, but you need, you can do it, you know, and then the grind is real, the journey's real. For Muay, Muay Thai, for, for me, it's like a, it's literally like a drug. I can't, I can't be without it. Um, we love it. Um, everyone, everyone comes here to fight. Everyone comes here, they, they all have the dreams of, of being a champion or fighting that big fight and winning and building a name for themselves and being proud. For me anyway, it's, um, what gets me up in the morning is knowing that I have to get up earlier than my opponent. I have to, I have to train, I have to kick harder than my opponent. I have to clinch longer because if I don't have that in my head, I'll become lazy and I know at that high level that he's doing that. So if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna go into a fight, if I'm gonna do something, why not give it my all, you know? Since, since I'm um, being here in Hulhin and at Sitrepo, I've, my, my level's just gone up just with the passion with the trainers, the relationships we can have together. Even though there's not much around us, like it's just mats and old bags, but there's just, there's just passion there, there's just friendship, a bond, and um, that gives me drive to, to um, impress my trainer, impress my wife, to have pride with myself when I have kids, what my kids think of me, what my dad thinks of me. Um, my next fight's with my, um, my dad's gonna be there and um, it's just, just giving me so much motivation to, to be proud and to, to, show, to show him, to show myself what I can do, you know? And I take the pressure off away from um, winning so much. Winning and losing is just about training hard, doing my best, you know? And by, by doing my best and removing that pressure a little bit and being in the now, um, you'll fight better, you perform better. When you're tense and you want to fight, want to win, you become a robot. So I just, I'm just trying to grow as a fighter and grow as a person at the same time and put it all together instead of just concentrating on small things and um, concentrate as a, as a whole and, and being a better person and a better fighter. Um, just, just growing all the time, every day. I think the Japanese call it Kaizen, but it's every day improving. Um, mentally, I try to read books more, I stay off my phone. It's just, and by the time I die, you wanna, you wanna, when you're in your deathbed, you wanna think, have I done enough? Have I done, am I proud? And you know, like a lot of people work and have jobs and they just, they dream and, and stay on Facebook and Instagram and see what other people do, but everyone can do it. Like, step out of the comfort zone and do it yourself and, and, and be proud of what you do. Like, you might not have as much money, you, you might not have a nice car, but at the end of the day, it's all memories and you don't die with, with, with coin or your money. You, you die with, with being proud or you die 
I don't know. I, I think just just step out of the box and and have an open heart and train and fight and if anything else, do do what you need to be like. Have a passion, sell pizzas. I don't know. Just just follow your dreams, chase chase your goals, and the sky's the limit, pretty much. Ladies and gentlemen, the time time boy tie um, there's different um, fighting styles in Thailand. So when a lot of people say, oh, I'm coming to Thailand, or I want to train Muay Thai, or even back in Australia or back, back in the, their home countries, they look at um, fighting Muay Thai and the styles. And, and people ask me, is there any advice or anything? And I'm like, have a look at what style you want to be. Like, feel who you are and, and how you would fight if you bumped into someone in the street and they headbutted you. So you, you, have you got a big heart? Do you want to just fight? Or are you smart? Are you technical? Are you, um, like in Thailand you have, it's called Moi Khao. Moi Khao is, is a knee fighter. It's a, he, he goes forward. He, does, he takes a bit of damage um, on his forehead by getting elbowed and punched and kicked, but he, he, he blocks a lot. He doesn't kick, he knees and he elbows and he clinches. And he, he's relentless and grinds you down and grinds you down and, he, and he's like, He's like a, um, a cheap suit. <laughs> and so anyway, you have Muay Thai fighters that just are relentless, they grind, but they take, less, they take less damage on their shins and they can fight more often. You have Muay Femur, it's a technical style fighter. It's, it's, um, they're not, not, not aggressive, they're on their back foot, they make you look stupid, you chase them in the fight, they lean back, they, they kick you, they don't have too much power, but they'll frustrate you and they'll win on points. And it's a beautiful, it's, it's um, a beautiful style of, of, of watching to fight as well. I fought, I fought a lot of Muay Thai fighters and it's frustrating and that's not my style. Uh, um, me, myself, it, um, I'm a Muay, Muay Mat and um, it's like a, a, I like to punch hard, I like to come forward, be aggressive, I take a lot of damage, I kick, I, I, big, big hands and I try and throw hard low kicks and I, I do, I bang my shins up, I get cut a lot, but I, I have the fire and, and I want to go for the knockout or I want to just, just I just want to ha have a hard fight because in my head, we, we're going to fight, so why not fight? Um, so you should look at all different, the styles there are, there's more, there's like, there's more styles. You look at what styles you, there are and you, and you choose and then you hone in on that, that, um, on that style, watch fights on YouTube, and um, become, you can cross, cross them as well, but become, become one style of fighter and you'll progress a lot faster. Yeah, fighting Muay Thai and bare knuckle kickboxing, it's, it is a fight. People see it, people fan, and fans watch it as a fight. Like, wow, all these two guys fighting. They, they, some even think they don't, they don't like each other, but literally it is, it is sport, it is business. Um, there's, no, there's no anger behind it all, there's no, there's no, you know, it, if you do put anger behind it all, you, you fight shit. You, um, every day at training, we're not angry. We're, we're, we're disciplined. We're learning the sport. We're learning the art. You know, it's more of an art form. It is an art form. And, um, yeah, we go, we go to training. We, we, we try to perfect, perfect every technique. We try to be, create beautiful Muay Thai. That's what we're in Thailand for, so it doesn't look scrappy like two dogs humping pretty much. Um, so anyway, we fight each other and we, everyone wants to go to the top. So whether you, your teammate or your friends on top, you know, it, it's not personal. It's, it's, it's everyone's dream, it's everyone's goal. So you can challenge, work your way up. We all want to be in the top. So people shouldn't get offended if they get challenged or if you have to fight your friend, it's okay. It's, it's fine, you know. You put that aside, you go in the ring, you have a better fight. Um, there is, and, and with Muay Thai, you have the training, you train hard, and then you have, uh, you, you taper your training down, you, you ease it off a little bit before the fight night, because you want to be recovered and fresh. But on that, in that time, that's when the, the nerves start coming in, that's when the thoughts of the fight come in, so the pressure comes in. But it is hard, like my first 15 fights, I, 20 fights. Even now, I get a lot of pressure, but I'm learning to deal with it more. I'm reading, I'm reading books. I'm reading um, mind conditioning stuff that helps you remove fear 
and turn it into excitement and nerves because you feel butterflies, you feel nervous, you, there's a chance of getting cut, knocked out, you know, there's a chance of dying, breaking your legs. I've had, fr I've had close friends break their legs, like oh, probably over three friends snap their legs multiple times. And um, yeah, there is a lot to think about, but if you stop thinking and just be present and have nothing and just think about what you've done, the hard work's done, you're fit, you rely on your skill, you rely on your conditioning, you rely on your trainer, hit, um, what he's telling you, you rely on his advice in between the rounds, and just just stop stop thinking and just and just be present and respond, react. You know, if you think, oh, he's got a good low kick, he's got a good low kick, he elbows good. Which in Thailand, like the Thai coaches, they're good, but they're they're not too switched on with putting fear in your head or telling you, like yesterday I was clinching and I was tired and I was pushing hard, training, and then I heard them speak inside, oh, he's not strong, oh, he's not strong, he have no power, and I'm like, fuck, man, I've got, I'm, tra I'm training hard, I've, I've got power, you know? Like, since, since I'm tired, I'm making myself stronger. Like, do you want me to be fresh? But anyway, there's, there's frustrations, ups and downs, and um, you just need to be strong for yourself. It's, it's, it's your own head, it's your own game, you're the only one in the ring, and, um, there's a lot to get right. Your physical conditioning, your, your mental side, your, you know, your trainer, your coach, your, your team. So the first you know, four weeks of the training is 95% is physical, 5% mental. And then you have the three, three days off that you taper and you're not training, you're resting, recovering, cutting weight, you're not eating. And then that flips around, you're not training, and it's 95% mental and 5% physical. And that's when you got to get your shit right if you want to fight good. Because people do their head and then it's like a flight or, fr um, flight or, fright, or f flight or fight response. So um, I'm still getting the hang of it, but I'm getting better and better each fight. I'm removing fear, turning it into excitement. I'm turning the nerves into power, to speed. And um, I'm just starting to love the process more. Loving, loving training when it's hard, when most people are training saying, fuck, I wish it was over. But I'm just trying to enjoy every, every minute of it because we're gonna be old, we're gonna be dead, and we're gonna have regrets. And I don't wanna have any regrets. kids here, especially being um, away and in more of the rural areas, uh, it's, it's just, it's so good to see the, tire, the, the kids like not on their phones and like, like in the western countries and they're getting trained, they're learning, they're using their brains and they learn so fast here, I swear it's just in their blood, in their DNA, they just whip a kick up and it's just perfect. But, um, but in Thailand here anyway for their first couple of fights, they don't, a lot of the gyms don't even train them. They just chuck them, they, they go, okay, the father brings the son usually, or if the son wants to be watching the TV and has inspiration, the father brings him to the gym, they talk to the gym owner that's um, close by, and they say, okay, Friday night he fights. No training, usually no training, and they just chuck him in the ring to, um, to see if he has heart. Because in Thailand, if they, if they think, oh, no heart, no power, they, they won't train you. Even if he trains good and, and then he fights, he, he's just not a fighter. So that's the way it is in Thailand anyway. Whether I, I think you can, you can train hard and you can train um, mentality, but that's the sad realistic of Thailand. But if the kid wants it enough and he has been watching it and he, and he does love it, he will fight hard. So anyway, as a Thai kid, he, he's probably around about I don't know, seven years old, maybe younger, six years old when he has his first fight, and, he, and they fight, they've got like rubber shins, they don't get injured at that age, it's hard for them to get injured. And they have, I've heard of stories of them just, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, the same night they fight, double, three times on the weekend. 
and um, they just rack their fights up. That's why they've had so many fights. When when people don't when people don't believe it, it's true because they just they just they fight so often. Anyway, they once they hit, I think 17 years old is the is the peak of um, is known to be the peak of of um, the fighting for for uh, men in Thailand. And for females, it's actually around about 13, 14 years old because they usually go onto something else with a better career since there's not much money, money in it as a female or it's not promoted as well, unfortunately, but it is getting better. But so it's about 17 year olds for a boy and they're in their prime, they're strong, they're fighting in the stadiums by then. They've, they've made a name for themselves. They're making, I think at that age, they might, might be making over 100,000 baht a fight if they're, if they're top level. If not, they might be around about 30,000 baht, which is good money. And after that peak at 17 years old, they'll, they'll either keep fighting if, they, if they've been doing well but they'll move into a trainer role at a gym. They'll start holding pads for just that extra monthly income of around about, of around about eight to 12,000 baht a month to be a trainer training twice a day. And then if it's a good gym, like the good Bangkok sold hard training gyms, they don't get privates because the classes are hard. You get, they smash their fighters, they want them to win. It's not so much like the commercial gyms where you get two rounds on pads and there's, there's no relationship with trainers, but these small, these small Thai gyms, there's a bond, there's a family. They want you, they want you winning fights. You, you take the last name of the gym, you know, usually. So it's, it's good training. Like you create a bond with that, your trainer. Like my trainers, I think he's 27 years old, 25 years old, but he's finished fighting maybe six years ago. But he's got the experience, he's holding pads now. He's, he's teaching me what, what he learned and he's passing it on to me. He, he sits there, he counts my sit-ups. He counts the pad rounds are just brutal. But he's all doing it for me. He's, he's not doing it because it's a job. He's not getting paid that much. He could go do other work, but he, he, he still has the fire and the passion in these small gyms. And it's just, it's why we're here and it's, it's, we're soaking it all up, all the knowledge. And um, it's tough, it's tough work, but you're training so hard that the fight, the fight becomes a lot easier. You know, you don't get as tired, you can keep going. And I, I've, fought, I've fought a lot, I'm not, not prepared enough. And man, it's not a good feeling. I'd rather, I'd rather have a good trainer in that relationship and push hard in the gym and then fight, fight hard, be fit, fight, fight well, win or lose, and um, have my trainer be proud of me and be proud of myself. It means a lot. I love time. <laughs>